All right, this uh, video is on the first part of chapter five, sections one and two. By the way, do you get this joke now? Your three standard deviations above the norm. Hmm. Well, thanks. In other words, uh, that's quite a compliment, saying that they're in the top, um, very, very top uh, 1% or even less than that uh, of everyone. So now let's talk about probability. Probability is the measure of the likelihood of a random phenomenon or chance behavior. So what's the probability of getting heads when you flip a coin? Well, it would be one out of two chances or 0.5 or 50%. That's assuming that it's a, a fair coin and being randomly uh, flipped. Now, the law of large numbers says as the repetitions of a probability experiment, and that's what a flipping the coin means is a probability experiment. Uh, so the more times you flip the coin, the proportion with which a certain outcome is observed gets closer to the actual probability of the outcome. And so um, this would be a graph of uh, flipping the coin many, many, many times. And once you get up here to three or 400 times, it's, uh, it averages pretty close to 50%. Of course, the first time you flip it, uh, it, say that you get a heads the first time, it's 100% heads. And maybe you get two heads in a row or two out of three. Then say two out of three, well, that's 66%, uh, which is a larger proportion than the actual probability. But once you get to um, many, many um, flips, it gets closer and closer to 50%. So... If you want to try this, flip a coin 50 times, record the results in an Excel spreadsheet. You could um, tally um, uh, heads as one and tails as zero, and then add them up as they go and see what uh, the proportion is once you get to 50. Um, it'll probably be somewhere between 45 and 55%. Now, we need to learn a new term, sample space, or S, of a probability experiment is the collection of all possible outcomes. So if you were to throw a die, just one die here, uh, the sample space of rolling one die is six because there's six possible outcomes. Now, what do you think would be the sample space of rolling two dice? Are you thinking 12? No, that's not it. It would actually be, oops, went too far. Uh, it would actually be 36 because you would keep track of the result on each die. So if the left die was red and the, had red dots and the right die had black dots, then if the left die got a one, there's six possibilities for the right die. If the left dot die got a two, once again, there's six possibilities for the right die and so forth. And you get to six times six or 36. So what is the sample space S of drawing an ace from a randomly shuffled deck of uh, 52 playing cards? Okay. What is the sample space of drawing a red nine from a randomly shuffled deck of 52 uh, playing cards. There's 52 cards in a full deck. Well, if you tried to figure the probability instead of the sample space, you would not quite be right. The answer is, is regardless of what card you are looking for, uh, and no matter how many of those cards there are in the deck, the sample space is still 52 because whenever you pull one card out of a the deck, there's 52 possibility, possible outcomes. Now, event E, and we're going to be talking about events. Um, those are things, random uh, events that happen. Is any collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. Simple events are events with only one outcome, but you can specify uh, a variety of possible outcomes that would satisfy the criteria of E. So here's, here's an event. 
It says uh, the event E equals roll an even number. So uh, if you roll two, four, or six with one die, uh, you would satisfy the criteria for E. Now, the rules for probabilities are, first of all, the probability of any event, and by the way, that is uh, written this way, the probability of event E must be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So all probabilities are between zero and one. The sum of all the probability of the sum of the probabilities of all outcomes must equal one. So what that means is the probability is 100% that one of the possible outcomes will be the outcome. Now an unusual event is an event that has a low probability of occurring. If an event is impossible, the probability of the event is zero. For instance, what is the probability of rolling a seven with one die? Can't do it, so it's impossible. The probability is zero. If an, an event is certain, uh, the probability of the event is one or 100%. So what's the probability of getting a one, two, three, four, five, or six when, when throwing one die? Well, it's one or 100%. Now, you can approximate probabilities using the empirical approach. What this means is running a trial or, um, and just seeing how many times the event E is satisfied. And then assume that if you continue the, um, the uh, experiment, that uh, you're going to get the same results. So the frequency that of E being satisfied divided by the number of trials um, uh, in the experiment would give you the approximate probability. Okay, so how close was the observed frequency of heads in our earlier experiment to 50% of the time? What could be done to make the observed frequency closer to the predicted frequency? Well, we mentioned before is just doing more of the same. Now we can compute the probabilities using the classical method. So the probability of an event is approximately the number of times the event E is observed divided by the repetitions of the experiment. That's the empirical, but here is the, um, the classical method. The number of ways that E can occur divided by the number of possible outcomes, in other words, the sample space. So if we wanted to roll an even number, the number of ways that E can occur is three. There's three even numbers on a die. And the number of possible outcomes is six. So three divided by six would be one half or 50%. Okay, now, so let's talk about what is the probability of rolling a seven with a pair of fair dice? Well. Oops, went too far. Uh, there are six combinations that, of two dies that um, equal seven. You can get a one and a six, or a two and a five, a three and a four, a four and a three, a five and a two, or a six and a one. So since there's 36 possible outcomes, uh, you would divide six by 36, so you would get 16.67%, one sixth if you will. Okay, when we have equally likely outcomes, we can use a tree like this. Um, and so say that a, a, what is the probability of a, of a couple uh, having a boy and then two girls? Well, the first child could be a, a boy or a girl, and then the second child could either be a boy or a girl, and then the third child. And so you um, wind up with eight possibilities. And um, so that's how you would calculate um, probabilities using uh, that have equally likely outcomes. Okay, oops. Okay, now you